a violent storm on Lake Michigan. Years later, his widow received the unexpected gift of his perfectly preserved wallet, which amazingly had washed up on the shores of Lake Michigan. The message in that wallet compelled Barbara, the captain's wife, to do something no woman had previously attempted, captain her own Christmas tree ship and carry on her husband's mission. The Christmas tree ship is playing at Ohio Star Theater in Sugar Creek, Ohio, from November 19th through December 28th. Visit OhioStarTheater.com for tickets. And welcome to Ohio Star Theater. How many of you have been here before? Show me your hands if you've been here before. A few of you have. We have a lot of new people. Are you enjoying the fall festival? Are you excited? It's fun out there today. Beautiful weather. So if you just got here and you're seeing the show, you have plenty to do out there. So go enjoy the rest of the afternoon with us, okay? So those videos that you just saw are for our musicals that we play. We start those in April and they run all through December of each year. So we would love for you to come back and join us. We have a show tonight at Simple Sanctuary. And as our special guest to today's show, we are going to offer $10 off of those tickets. So if you want to stop at the box office before you leave, it doesn't have to be to the next show, but we would love it while you're here. If you want to stay and, and see it, you can, but you can get $10 off those tickets. And those are good for either of the shows that you just saw in the video, uh, Simple Sanctuary or the Christmas Tree Ship through December this year. So we would love for you to join us. Uh, just a couple things before we get started. If you do need to use the restroom, we're not having an intermission today. So the restrooms are in the right hand corner in the lobby out here. And you can go right through the back doors here to get to that section. Um, we would love for you to take video and photography and show your experience today to your friends. So feel free to, to do that as much as you would like. Um, we hope we don't, but there are explosions in this show. So if there isn't an emergency situation, um, the emergency exits are on either side of the auditorium and the doors you came back uh, through to come in today. So those are on either side and the back, okay? So today's show, has anybody seen Dr. Dave before? Have you seen him before? So a couple of you have. So I got acquainted with Dr. Dave when my kiddos went on a field trip with their school to see him. And they came home and they were so excited about all the things. They ate chocolate covered bugs. Now I don't know if he's doing that today, but that's one thing that stuck in their mind. Explosions, flying toilet paper, eating bugs. Science can be fun and I'm hoping someday math can be fun too. So I'm gonna have you work on that. Um, you can make math fun as well. But you're going to love the show today. Um, so sit back and relax and help me welcome to the stage Dr. Dave and Mrs. Whizbang. All right, thank you very much. Um, I got a little tingle on my back when she started giving you the exits to get out of here. I was like, oh yeah. I never had anybody warn people like that before. It's fantastic. So, I'm Dr. Dave, and I've been doing shows for about 16 years now, and I've really enjoyed it and have a lot of fun uh, explaining science to people in, in ways that they can understand. And so, I want to start off the first, first uh, getting our prerequisites up. And before our college classes, we always have to have prerequisites. And so, does anybody know what atoms are? Anybody? Yeah, what are atoms? They are the smallest unit of an atom that still has full energy. The smallest unit of an element that make, makes the element. So like oxygen, there's atoms make up oxygen. They're real tiny. They're real, real, real small. You can't see them with your naked eye. But you can see a group of them when they get together. You can't see one, but you can see a group of them when they come together. And so I'm a group of atoms, you're a group of atoms, the stages, everything. Everything is made out of atoms. Even the air, we can't see the air, but it's made out of atoms. If you take a big breath and blow on your hand, you can feel it. You can feel those atoms of gas. So. When atoms come together, they form different states. Who knows what the different states of matter are? Yes, right over here. Liquid? Solid? 
Very good. Solid, liquids, and gases. And so I want to show what those look like up close. So I had asked for some volunteers before the show. So if those volunteers could come up to the stage right now, come on up. Hurry up, hurry up. We only got three hours for the show. Three hours, and they're like, oh no. Hey, people that have come here before, don't worry, I'm giving a pie away sometime during the show. You will get your free pie. All right. So, girls, come on this side, boys on this side. Oh, look at this. We got an extra. Yes. Girls, come on this side. We segregate. You'll find out why. All right, so these are going to be my human atoms. We're going to pretend that we have a microscope that's really, really big. Do you know what a microscope is? Yeah, if you take a sample of blood, you can see the cells that make up the blood. It helps us to see real small things. So we use a microscope to look at small things. In fact, I've got a really cool microscope. I'm going to share this. I do not make any money off of this, but it's one of the coolest things I ever got. It's a microscope that goes onto my smartphone. So it uses my smartphone camera, and I can look at things and take pictures, and it only costs $13. And I got the coolest microscope I ever had in my life, even as a scientist. The big expensive ones I bought to look at things. That's the coolest one I ever had. So I encourage you to, if it's coming to your birthday or Christmas, ask for that. You can get it on Amazon for 13 bucks. And it's more fun taking pictures of things and have people guess what they are. I love it. All right, so these are going to be my human atoms. These are going to show us what the different states of matter look like up close. So I need you just to line up. Can I take that? Oh, you can sit it back here on the table. Nope. All right. So first, we're going to hook our arms together real tight. Hook your arms together real tight. Oh, yeah, there's a shy atom. Okay. So... It's okay. So, what state of matter are we right now? Real time. What state of matter? Tell me, guys. Solid. We're a solid. These atoms are hooked together really, really tightly. When one of us moves, we all move. We move as a big group. To get through us, you'd have to break us. You can't just walk through us, you'd have to break us. Think of a pencil. You can't put your finger through a pencil. You've got to break that pencil first. And then you can put your finger right through it. So this is a solid. We don't take up very much space. Really compact. Okay, so now, hold hands. Everybody, hold hands. So now, we can move around now. These atoms can move around, but they're still touching. What state of matter are we now? Real loud. We're a liquid. We're a liquid. We take the shape of a container. Whatever you pour us into, we take that shape. So if you pour us into a two-liter bottle, it'll look like a two-liter bottle. So this is a liquid. We still don't take up much space because we have to be touching. But I could be down there, I could be over there, I don't have to be, I'm not rigid into one spot like I am in a solid. This has a, and liquids generally have a little more energy to them. Okay, so I'm gonna, we can let go, and you guys can run around the stage. Don't fall off the front. So run around, run around, run around, oh yeah, there we go. So what state of matter are we now? Gas. We're a gas, we have lots of energy. In fact, if we were a really good gas, we'd be bouncing off the ceiling. We wouldn't be staying just here. We'd be bouncing off, we'd be trying to find our way out of here. A gas tries to take up as much space as it possibly can. So it has the most energy, takes up the most space. All right, so give these human atoms a round of applause. We can go right over there for this new thing. Okay, so. Let's go right over there. I know it's kind of dark. You can make it your way over here. Yeah, right. It's good. There we go. All right. So we're going to talk about um, a few different things um, that's going to relate back to those different states of matter. Um, we're going to talk about air pressure. We're going to talk about flight. We're going to talk about rockets. And, uh, and then we're going to talk about one of my favorite liquids that I have. And after all of that, you guys are going to see a really cool show 
Then we're going to go outside and we're going to release monarchs. Yeah, that's like the bonus. It's a bonus show you're getting afterwards. So, it'll be a lot of fun. So, how did we first fly? Does anybody know how we first flew? Let's see. I see right here. No, no, not. How did, what type of craft did we fly in? Not in a plane. In a balloon. In a hot air balloon, in fact. And it was the Montgolfier brothers back in 1783. They were, they were sitting around a fire. And when they were, have you guys ever sat around a fire? Yeah, some of you have. Let's, let's get a fire first. So, if I could have my lovely assistant. Let's get a fire going. Oh, yeah. So, when they were sitting around their fire, they were poking into it. And when they were poking into it, things started to go up in the air. So, you guys, go ahead. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Well, there we go. Whoa! So, the flames went up, and they saw those flames going up. And it surprised them that sparks went up. And they said, there must be something special about fire that can make things float. So they got a paper sack, similar to this here. This is a Chinese lantern. And they put that paper sack over their fire. And when they did that, the hot air filled up this paper sack. And it made it lighter than air and it started to float. And they realized that if they could make a big enough paper sack, that they could actually fly in this. And lucky for them, their dad was like the Steve Jobs of 1783. <laughs> you laugh. He made paper. Paper was high tech in 1783, be able to make lots of paper. And he made paper. So they had access to lots of paper. So they asked their dad, can we make a big sack out of paper that we can fly in? And their dad was like, I'll let you make it, but you can't fly in. Don't, if you promise not to fly in. Because he didn't, he thought that would be very dangerous. So they did. So they made a hot air balloon. And they had, it was an engineering feat because it was made out of paper and it carried a fire underneath it. So they really had to figure out, do a lot of engineering to make sure that balloon wouldn't burn up. It was pretty crazy. And they were successful. They were actually competing with a group that had a lighter than air balloon. I had a pair of scissors up here somewhere and I think I disappeared. I know where they're at. She knows where they're at. So, I need a volunteer to help me out with that. Who, who, who would like to volunteer? This young man here. You gave me a good answer with Adams there. Alright, go ahead. So, this balloon has a special gas in it. Does nobody, anybody know what the gas is in this balloon? Just yell it out. Helium. Helium. Helium, Helium atoms are like baby atoms of the universe. Atoms are different sizes. Heliatom, helium atoms are really small. What's your name? Kyle. Kyle. Kyle, are you trustworthy? Yes. Yes. Don't let that go, Kyle. Okay. So, that balloon is filled up with a gas that's really light, and it's floating. You've seen this before. Who's been in a swimming pool and pushed a ball in the water? When you let go of the ball, what happens? This balloon just floats back up. Why does it float back up? It's filled with a gas. The water is more dense than it, and it pushes the balloon or the ball right up and out of the water. So, hold on to that. Don't let go. So this balloon is filled up with helium, which is a very light gas. It's like the ball. The air around us is heavier than this, like the water. And so when I push it down, boom. It goes up, hits Kyle, hits him right in the head. 
Actually, the atmosphere tries to push it all the way out. The atmosphere is pushing on us all the time with an incredible, incredible force. On every square inch of us, it's pushing on us with 14, over 14 pounds of pressure. So on a square inch is about the size of a quarter. On every square inch of us, 14 pounds of pressure, which is like this bowling ball. Imagine if you could take this bowling ball and shrink it to the size of a, of a super ball, but it'd still weigh 14 pounds and having those stacked all over you. That would crush you. That would be a lot of weight. However, we have that weight pushing on us all the time, that pressure pushing on us all the time, and we don't get crushed. Well, the reason is, it's because we're pressurized on the inside. And that balloon's pressurized on the inside. So it can compete with that and doesn't get crushed. So, Kyle, have you ever seen a hot air balloon? No. no, not in real life. Okay, what's on the bottom of a hot air balloon? We've got to help him out here. A basket. A basket. So, we got you a fancy basket here. You can actually do this at home. You know, they're not, there's a helium shortage right now. And so, the big tanks of helium are going for equipment in hospitals. There's a lot of equipment in hospitals that's run by cooled um, liquid helium, which is really, really, really cold. And so, you don't see the big, the big companies that sell balloons aren't selling as many now because they're having trouble getting it. However, you can get helium at, at Walmart. And I, I wondered why. Well, they're starting to put air in it. It's only 80% helium. So they're cutting it. But you can do this if you get a helium balloon. You can do this with a little, uh, those little paper cups. Put three strings in it and tie it onto your balloon. So we're going to recreate the Montgolfiers hot air balloon with a lighter than air balloon. Hold on to that. So I need you guys to make a prediction for me. When Kyle lets go of that, what's going to happen to that balloon? I hear you say it's going to go up. Does anybody think it's going to go down? We just tied something. A few of you think it's going to go down. All right. Three, two, one. Whoa, it goes up. So the amount of weight that this can float is equal to the amount of weight of the air that that displaces, that that balloon pushes out of the way. So we need some passengers. So we got some peeps. Can I have one? No, can't have one. All right, so we just added some passengers in there. What do you think is going to happen now? It's going to sink. It's going to float. Going to go up. Kyle's holding on to the balloon. He's got the most information. He can feel it. He can feel it tugging. He can feel gravity pulling it down. He can feel the helium pulling it up. What do you think is going to happen? He thinks it may go up. I may need more peeps if that's the case. So let's see. Mrs. Wiz well, second. Mrs. Wizbang is, is mic tonight for the first time ever. This is a premiere of her being on the mic. And I got a prediction. It's going to be the quietest she ever is for your show. <laughs> All right. Three, two, one. Oh, no. Oh, no. You can let it go. It is too heavy. I thought it, I thought it would be close. It seemed like it wasn't a lot there. All right. So, if you do this at home, we want to make it something that's fun. And so to do that, we want to make it so it's neutrally buoyant. Buoyant means to float. Neutral means not to go up or go down. So, Kyle, you need to pull out peeps until it floats in midair. Think you can do that? Why don't you turn around there so they can all see you doing that? Yeah. Well, you're close. close. You're close. Do you like peeps? Yes. Maybe you can keep that. <laughs> don't eat them on stage. Yeah. Wow, I'm embarrassed. Oh, you're real close. You know what? You gotta bite off part of that peep and put it back in. <laughs> Alright, so
So a neutrally buoyant, neutrally buoyant balloon, similar to what the Montgolfier brothers did, but they had a hot air, but it's a little more dangerous to have a hot air balloon. Why don't you take this, and you can take this home, just throw it back behind the back so it's not in anybody's way. Maybe throw that other one in so it doesn't float away. <laughs> All right. So thank you very much, Kyle. Appreciate it. All right. So that's something that you can do at home. And I just wanted to show you that basket was made out of a two-liter bottle that I cut the top off. And I encourage kids, adults, if you want to do science, if you want to mix some stuff in here, uh, vinegar, baking soda, make a mess. These are great. You don't need a science kit. You get one of these and you can mix stuff up. And when you're done with it, you can recycle it. Um, the best thing, I used to use glassware. I thought I had to have big glassware because I was a science guy. Well, a big thing like this costs like $70. When you drop it, it breaks. And then I cut myself cleaning it up. Worst thing ever. And so I started using these, and these are fantastic. So next, we're going to learn a little bit more about the power of air pressure. But I, I want to pose to you a problem I have, and I need your help solving it. So I have a glass milk bottle made out of hard glass, and I got an A. And I want to put that A in the milk bottle. How can I do that? Oh, put a candle under it. Put a candle under it, he says. Okay, he's kind of scientific. We're going we're gonna to do something similar to that, but I need other ways. I want other ways. I want you guys to think of other ways. A paper on fire. I want you to think of other ways. Maybe not so scientific. Yes. Crack it. I can crack it, couldn't I? That seems a little easier. Oh, you know what? These are hard-boiled eggs. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I got one here with the shell is off of it. Just a hard-boiled egg, and it still doesn't fit in there. Okay. What else? How else? What, how can I get that egg in there? Push it. I could push it in there. I could just physically push it in there. I could take... I got a... I got a big... There it is. This looks like to me like a Thor hammer. I could take that and smash it in there. That would be kind of cool. Okay, other ways. Give me more ways. I need more ways. Yeah, in the back. You could take the bottle and put it in there. Okay, so maybe bust the egg up a little bit. I could break the egg up. Maybe I could be like a mama bird and I could chew that egg up and spit it in there. Ugh. Ugh. Mama birds do that all the time. Yes. I could slice it into thirds. Nicely slice it into thirds. That'd be a little, that's a little hard to do. Thirds are difficult to do. But I could do that. I could eyeball that. Yes. More ways. More ways. I mean, you guys are not thinking out of the box yet. Okay, I could make a little vacuum cleaner, kind of, and reduce the air pressure in there with that. And you say suck, I say the air pressure pushes it in. Different, different language, but the same thing. Okay, that's never been suggested before. I wanted you to know. I've done this hundreds of times. Yes? Oh, put the egg in, in water and baking soda and cause the pressure from that to push it in. Interesting. Ah, put a hole in the bottle and then that would make it so we could blow it in. I, that is a new one. That's a new one too. I like that. Yes, right there. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Yes, right back there. Oh, we could lubricate it. And you said my favorite thing, butter. We could do that. Actually, how I eat these eggs is I slice them in half and put a pat of butter on each side and salt and eat it. 
People think that's weird, but it is it's good. delicious. <laughs> it's so good. So yeah, we could lubricate it with, with butter, with oil, maybe with, I got some Dawn detergent in here, we could make that a little slippery and get that in. Nobody has, well, you said about putting a hole in the bottle. Nobody has said anything about doing anything to the bottle other than that, though. What could we do to the bottle? Yes? So, heat it up and then put water on it, and that actually would probably work if we heated it up and then cooled the bottle down with the egg on top. We probably could get it to push in. What else could, what could we do to the bottle? Yeah, right here. We could slice the top of the bottle off. We got that technology. We can do that. We could cut the top of the bottle off and just put it in there. Very good. And we could even glue it and make it so people couldn't tell. I, I have a torch up here. We could heat that bottle up. We don't have time for that. But we could heat that bottle up and the glass will start to deform. And we could actually make the opening bigger. I've actually had people say, why don't you just get a bigger bottle? <laughs> and then somebody says, why don't you just get a smaller egg? Which, yeah, we've got a quail egg, we can easily put that in. So, we are going to do it the scientific way. And I need a volunteer, I need, in fact, two volunteers to help me out with that. Okay, and I'm going to take the, the boy and girl right there. Are, are they related to each other? Okay, don't fight when you're up here. <laughs> What's your name? Gabby. Gabby? Joe, all right, come up here, center stage. All right, Gabby, you get the bottle. Joe, you get the egg. So we're going to do it the scientific way. In fact, Joe, I want you on that side of her. All right. So I'm going to light this piece of paper on fire. So it's going to be flaming. You have a problem with fire? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Got it out. No, hold it. You don't let go of that bottle. Right there. You're, you'll be fine. You will be fine. All right. I'm going to drop it in. Joe, I need you to put the egg on top right when I do that. Okay. So test run. Boom. And let's put it, let's make sure we got the right, let's put that narrow in. I know they both look pretty the same, but let's put the narrow in. Alright, so watch this, and then we'll explain what happened. Oh, you're good, you're getting right up there. Back away a little bit, because the things. Oh yeah, she's excited. You run around like crazy, and then you get tired. 
You get a sugar coma, we call it sometimes, where you get lethargic and you don't want to move around. So, what are you doing up here? So, she's trying to throw that at you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, it, the, the atoms slow down in there and the pressure drops. And that air pressure around us pushes that egg right in. Okay. So who wants to see it one more time, since we know what we're watching for this time? Okay. Hey, you got braver. All right, you're going to hold it, because you should have seen how nervous she was. So switch spots. There we go. Yeah, he's good. He's good. So that narrow one, put that in. Yeah. Don't worry, I got a fire extinguisher. Oh, I heard it. Oh, that one goes back. Oh! <laughs> All right. So now we figured out how to get the, the egg in the bottle. So, did you see it shake that time? You know, I didn't see it shake, but I heard it. I want to get that paper out of there. You want to get the egg out. Okay. So, uh, okay. Gross. So now we got the egg in. Now we got another problem. How to get the egg out of the bottle. So, I have done this before where I did this cool experiment and then I put the bottle in my van and a week later Mrs. Whizbang gets in the van. I get yelled at. She doesn't think it's very funny. I'm like, well, it's a, it's a natural process. It just happened there. It rots and it smells really bad when that happens. So how can we get the egg out? Does anybody got an idea how we can get the egg out of there? Use a chainsaw and cut it open. I like you. I like you. I, that would be pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Anybody else got a way that's not going to blind me? Flying shards of glass? Right, right back here. Shake the bottle harder. It's stuck in there. It's stuck in there. Okay, back there. Get a hammer and smash it. That's pretty good, but I'd like to keep the bottle. So, not going to do that one. Oh, you're dying. What's... what's Oh, put some cold water in there. Do you think that would just help to maybe force it out a bit? We can there? Yeah? What do you think? Right next to it. Keeping that thought in your head. <laughs> oh! Bleach! What? Bleach! Bleach, okay. We'll have to talk afterwards. Okay, right over here. Make heat. Ah, if I heat that up, I'll increase the pressure inside of there, and I might be able to get that out. And one more, right here. Say, the, say that again. Smack the bottom of the bottle. Nope, it kind of makes it bounce up. All right, so I am going to increase the pressure inside this bottle the way I'm actually going to do it. Not by heating it, but by blowing into it. So, I'm going to come to this side. Do you guys see that not going in the garbage can? We did that garbage can really fast. So to do this, I just put my lips up to it, and I blow. Oh, it's coming. You can just pull that out, but just wait for it. Wait for it. Sometimes it comes flying out, and then... Whoa! There we go. Give these two a good round of applause. Thank you very much. You guys are great, and no fighting up here. Impressed. All right. So, now comes to the ultimate exciting part of the show where I try to set a world's record. You say, Dr. Dave, what world's record are you going to set? 
Well, the famous world record on how many eggs you can get in a bottle in one minute. Yes. I set the world record several years ago at 11. It has remained unbroken. How many do you have? I got 12 up here. So if I could get 12. So I'll need you guys enthusiastically cheering me on. And uh, so I've attempted it three more times, and I've got 11 twice and 10 once. That 10 was rather disappointing. I'm hoping under these nice controlled conditions with a big crowd that I'll get it. So you, uh, Mrs. Whizbang, you are in charge of telling me when to go. So here we go. Mark, get set, go. One, get in there. Friend, let's cheer him on. Yeah. So, 
you turn that on, and I'm going to drop it in. So we're creating a, an area of low pressure. So that ping pong ball will stay in there. And you can see she's moving around. I don't even have to tell her to do this. She's moving it around. And it stays in there. It's bouncing back and forth. When it gets out to where the pressure's a little higher, it pushes back in. It gets pushed back in. So this is cool. This is something you can do at home with a blow dryer and a ping pong ball. Go ahead and turn that off. However, I get, a bit, I get a bored when I do it like that. So I'm going to use my Bernoulli device here. Some of you may know it as a 60 volt max brushless the wall leaf blower. I knew that's a Bernoulli device. So here we go. I'm going to turn this on and you place it in that stream. It's a little more, it takes a little more skill. Bring it on up. Come on. If we were toilet paper in somebody's house, we'd be 
cut by now. It's got to be fast. about with our pump rocket 
And let's see if we can get it up there. Oh, yes! Woo! Joyce almost caught Yeah. So that rocket shoots off, but it doesn't operate how rockets normally operate. Rockets operate by shooting gas out the bottom of them. I actually made a lot of gas to push, compressed gas to push the pressure to push that one out. But rockets, the development of rockets, didn't start when we started making rockets, but it started back 2,000 years ago when the Chinese invented something. Does anybody know what the Chinese invented that helped to start rockets? Who? Yes. Before, what, they, what did they need to invent before they could invent fireworks? Gunpowder. Gunpowder. So they actually took sulfur and saltpeter and charcoal, mixed them together, I, who knows how they came upon this, mixed them together, and they put them in a tube, a bamboo tube, and they tossed it in a fire. And when they did that, It exploded. And they were like, that's pretty cool. And I would have been, if I could have invented gunpowder and done that, I think I would have been set for life. I'd been like, yep, that was neat. That was like the neatest thing I ever did. And so, but somebody figured out how to put a fuse on it. So they didn't have to throw it in the fire. They could light the fuse and then toss it. Ah. Ah. And it would go. After that, they figured out how to use these when they fought. So they would tie them to arrows. They would light them, and they would shoot the arrow at their enemy. And it would explode. They called them flaming arrows. And so, I, would, I think if I had an arrow coming at me, I wouldn't be very cool with that anyway. And I'd be wanting to run. But if I had arrows that were exploding falling around with me, I know I'd be done. Okay, that's it. That's all. I like it. So sorry. One time, when they were shooting an arrow off, it didn't explode. Instead, the gunpowder started burning and shooting gas out the back. And when it did that, that arrow went farther than it ever went before. And they talked about that. And somebody realized um, what had happened. And that was the first rocket was made by mistake, was a, pretty much a firecracker attached to an arrow that didn't blow up, it didn't burn really fast, it burned fast enough that it shot a bunch of gas out and pushed that rocket farther than it ever did before. So, that was, that's a pretty cool thing, but I want to show you a uh, balloon rocket here, and I need a volunteer. Somebody that hasn't helped yet. Amanda. You haven't? What? Amanda. <laughs> I'm going to pick these kids, Amanda. <laughs> right here, this young man right here. I'm used to the kids being in a group in front of me sitting on the floor. So, they, they usually bounce up really fast. I'm not used to the stage thing. So, I have here a balloon rocket. This balloon rocket works the same scientific principle that big rockets work, that that first rocket worked. That was a mistake. What's your name? Charlie. So, Charlie, that principle is called Newton's third law of motion. For each action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Charlie, may I push you? Yes. Okay. Come here. Come here. I don't want to push you off the edge. So I'm going to push you. And Charlie, you play soccer? Good. So you're not going to go fall like a soccer player. Be more like a football player. Okay. So I'm going to push Charlie. Watch what happens to him. Oh! And watch, Charlie, you are firm. <laughs> Do you play football? You play basketball and golf. Awesome. So when I push Charlie, which way does Charlie go? A little bit that way. Which way do I go? A lot farther that way. Yeah. You're a rock. Okay. So, the same 
That same principle is what makes rockets fly, including this. Whew. So that's a balloon rocket. It's filled up with gas, and that gas is under pressure. That gas wants to come out and go out this hole. So if the gas goes out that hole that way, which way is the balloon rocket going to go? It's going to go that way. You guys are understanding physics. Newton's third law of motion. Very good. We, just, we started out with atoms and the states of matter, and now you're already on to, to Newton's laws. Okay. So, would you take this? And, yeah, point it out at that audience. <laughs> now, we need a countdown for a rocket. So let's, get, let's start at three. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah. Where'd it go? Um, that's how I was going to give away the pie. I think I won the pie now. No, no. The ceiling won the pie. No, we got another one. Yeah. Always be prepared. So this one, we're going to change a bit. Have you ever seen a rocket shaped like that? Nope. And the reason is we changed the center of gravity of this rocket. Right now the center of gravity is right here. So when this force is pushing it up, it's going to be pushing it that direction. All right. So here we go. Let's start at three again. Three. You know what you just did? You just went on a pie. Yeah. All right. I was supposed to have something to give you. All I got is a credit card. I'll take that. I give you my library card. You give them that library card out there. They'll give you a pie. All right. Now, give this young man a big round of applause. So, that was fun, one balloon going up in the air. So, my crew here is going to pass out balloons, so they got little uh, binder clips on the balloon. Leave the binder clip on for just a second until we all get balloons passed out. I have never done this before. I'm recording this, right Mark? Yeah, good. I want to see this. Leave that binder clip on for right now. What are you trying to do? Show me the time? Yeah. Okay. Are you guys having fun? Okay. Oh yeah, we're getting some in the back. The cheap seats. So the binder clips are on there. How are we, how are we doing? Everybody's got a balloon that wants a balloon? We're getting there. Okay, if you didn't get a balloon, I am sorry. I'm going to apologize. Okay, so hold on above the binder clip to that balloon. Hold that really tight. And then we're going to take off the binder clip. But you don't want to hold on tight so the air doesn't come out. So above the binder clip, hold on to that balloon. Take the binder clip off, squeeze that off, and take that off. And then make sure that that balloon isn't still flapped over. Where I folded it over so the air wicks come out, sometimes that likes to stick. Make sure that flap is open. Okay? So here we go. Newton's, we're demonstrating Newton's third law of motion. Is everybody ready? Yep, I didn't, that was very confirming. Is everybody ready? Yeah! There we go. Okay. 
So, I'm going to start at five. Five, four, three, two, one. If you 
If you've ever seen a Falcon 9, who has seen a video of the Falcon 9 launching? A few of you have. Okay. I want, I want you guys, here's, here's your homework, is to go online and look up Falcon 9 SpaceX and watch a launch of this rocket. I just went down to, to uh, Florida and saw the Falcon Heavy launch, and it's pretty much three of these strapped together. And the cool thing about this rocket is that normally when you launch a rocket, the first stage, this first part is the first stage, it falls into the ocean. Bye-bye rocket. It has a lot of engines, worth millions and millions of dollars, and they just throw it away. Well, they decided they were going to try to recover that first stage. So they actually bring this first stage, 14 stories tall, bring it and land it either on Earth, on, a, on the surface, or in the ocean on a big barge, and land it straight up and down. It's the coolest thing I think I've ever seen. And so I was lucky enough to go to uh, Kennedy Space Center and see a launch, and then see them land two of the side boosters um, about eight miles away from us. And it was really cool, especially the sonic booms that you hear. But when it's coming back, when you watch the video, you'll notice that there is, it looks like gas coming out, it looks like clouds of gas coming out the so side of this rocket. And that's nitrogen gas. They're steering it by shooting nitrogen out using Newton's third law of motion to steer it to where they want to go. Which leads me to my favorite liquid I said I brought to share with you guys. Anybody know what I have in here? I got liquid nitrogen. It is 320 degrees below zero. It is really, really cold. So I'm going to pour it into my fancy beaker here. So you guys can see it. So it looks just like water, it's clear. And it's boiling right now. The air around here is 400 degrees warmer than that liquid nitrogen. So it's adding so much heat to it that it's turning it from a liquid to a gas, and that gas is coming off. Now if I blow in here, I'll add more heat, and it'll boil even faster, and produce a big cloud. That cloud is the water vapor that's in the air, it condenses out. You know how if you have a drink, that a cold drink, water will heat up on the side of your drink? Well, that's what's happening here, is it's actually making it ice. So we're gonna have, in a bit, we'll have snow on the side of this container be able to brush off. Now, is this safe for me to breathe? I'm hearing, I hear some no's. It is absolutely safe for me to breathe. 80% of the air we breathe is nitrogen gas. So 80% of the air we breathe is the same nitrogen. There's no problem for me to breathe this or for you to breathe this. The problem would be if we were in a room and this is all we had. We need that 20% oxygen. So, but we're really lucky that we have this, we're blessed that we have nitrogen gas, because it doesn't react with things very easily. So, if we had like pure oxygen, things would catch on fire incredibly easy. It, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to survive here. So we need this nitrogen gas that tends to moderate things, so things don't react, aren't so reactive. So it's a pretty cool substance. So, also, should I put my hand in here? No? No? Should I, should I have held fire? No. No, I shouldn't have done that, so... Whew. I can actually stick my hand in there without it freezing, if I do it really fast. If I left it in there, though, for longer, it would freeze it. The reason I can do it is my hand is so warm that it actually starts boiling and forms a layer of gas around my fingers, so they don't freeze. Um, I think it's been over an hour since the show started. I'm getting a little hungry. So if you won't mind, I'm going to have some cheese puffs. But I'm going to have really cold cheese puffs. So, never, ever, ever, never. Does anybody have liquid nitrogen at home? No. Mrs. Whispang, she does. Okay. Never put a liquid nitrogen in your mouth. Do not drink it. it 
can really screw you up. It, um, it will freeze your stomach, it will inflate, it will make your stomach essentially explode, um, but not a bow, but more just bust it open, and um, you'll never get to eat through your mouth again. So don't do that. Mistake. However, I can make a cheese puff really cool, and I can get all the liquid out of it.
that it's slowing down those gas molecules. Those human atoms, if I would have chilled them down, they would have slowed down and they would have come closer to me. And that's what's happening here. The gas atoms are slowing down and they're getting closer together and they're turning into a liquid or a solid, depending on what type of atoms or molecules we have. Deflating. I think we could call that shrinking. It's getting smaller. So I'm not sticking my fingers in there too much. So when I pull it out, we pretty much get a completely deflated balloon. You can see in the bottom, there's some milky liquid in there. And that's the liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen from my breath. And then there's also some solid in there. Solid of the water that's frozen into ice, and solid of the carbon dioxide in my breath that turned into dry ice. And now as it warms up, it starts to inflate again. And so this will completely inflate this balloon. However, I think you guys, some of you would have rather had this explode, wouldn't you? Yes. So let's make it explode. And the way we're going to do that is I'm going to shrink it down and then I'm going to tie a knot. And that'll make it so it doesn't have as much room to expand in and the pressure will increase get much higher. I might want to cover your ears. This expands really slowly, so it builds up a lot more pressure in this balloon than they usually get in a balloon when it pops. You can see it's getting wider than it normally was, and it's getting clearer now. So it stretches that thinner and thinner. This suspense is killing me.
today. For my last, this is the this is the bonus show right now. Is I have been raising monarchs this summer, and I have over 50 monarchs with me today. In fact, these monarchs that are coming out right now are going to do one of the most amazing things. Oh, other than pee right in front of me. It might be a little scared, but these monarchs are going to migrate to Mexico. Nearly 3,000 miles they're going to fly. We just had monarchs just observed in Cleveland. They flew across Lake Erie, 50 to 60 miles, um, straight one, one long flight. And they, they stopped and, uh, and landed in Cleveland because the storm was coming. Usually they go past Cleveland because there's not a lot of wildflowers in Cleveland. And so they keep on going, but they stopped and landed there last, uh, I think it was last night. So, I have been tagging monarchs with little tiny stickers. I get the stickers from an organization that's trying to learn more about this migration. And so each sticker has a unique number on it. So this one's going to be AALG084. And I take my little sticker off. And I stick it on the distal. Oh! I stick it on the distal cell, which is the biggest cell there on this butterfly's back wing. And that does not bother it at all. It can still fly well with that. And then I'll record. I got to find out now if this is a male or female butterfly. This is a male butterfly. To tell that, you look at the veins on the back of the butterfly. And the veins of a male are real narrow, and they have two circles on one of the veins on either uh, side of the back, back wing. They have two circles that are real obvious. The female's veins are big and thick, real thick black veins. And so you can easily tell that. So I will, this is a, a male, I better repeat that to myself a couple times. And I will send this information on of where I let it go, the date, and then, if they find this along the way, if somebody is out catching butterflies and finds it, or they pay people to go down to Mexico where these, they come to a mountain, millions of them come and descend on these fir trees in this very small area. And they stay there because it's not too cold, it's not too hot, so they don't use a lot of energy, they just hang out until they decide that it's warm enough, and then they mate, and they fly back to Texas and lay eggs. And then those butterflies that come from those eggs come up here and lay eggs. And the butterflies from that go up to Canada. So it's a pretty cool process. So this butterfly has never been to Mexico. In fact, it was probably its great-great-grandparents that were in Mexico. And, but it's going to know to go back there. So one of those miracles that we have of creation. So I'm going to go out front, and I got butterflies. And so I'm gonna, we're going to hand out butterflies and release them. So... Come on out if you want to enjoy. But thank you so much. Thank you to Higher Star Theater for having me come.